Well, on Daily Business, uh, we will turn our attention now to the United States of America and starting the final lap of the presidential campaign 2020. November 3rd is the date of voting, but uh, lots of things will happen before of it. Uh, Artur Rublewski of Lazarski University is our guest tonight, so welcome to the show. Uh, hello, good evening. Let us start from the famous quote, Loch Ness, monster of the swamp, uh, said Donald Trump. Uh, talking about whom, you guess? Uh, we know that uh, he was talking about uh, Joe Biden and in a wider context about uh, liberal leftist agenda, which is threatening the United States according to President Donald Trump. Um, what is interesting about this Republican convention is that it's not only the first virtual convention, but also that every day during the four days um, of the convention, of the event, uh, President Trump wants to speak. It's unusual because uh, in the past, um, the candidates uh, nominated uh, spoke at the end of the event. It was like a cherry on the cake. But in this case, he wants to be a part of this every day. And all of those four days are concentrated or organized around certain leading themes. Like, for example, during the first day, there was a talk about um, the United States as the land of many promises. The second day will be under the title the United States, the land of many possibilities. The third day, the land of many heroes. And the fourth day, the land of many, uh, of, of beautiful life. Uh, so uh, it is uh, well uh, prepared. And we see that President Trump, as the best showman, will be presiding over this event and will be dominating this event. But what is uh, interesting also is that President uh, Trump in the past, a few months ago, uh, he had some uh, competitors, like, for example, Joe Walsh uh, from, or Bill Weld from Libertarian Party, or uh, Mark Sanford, uh, the former governor of uh, South Carolina. So it was not maybe uh, obvious to some that he will be uh, renominated without any problems. Uh, moreover, uh, a few weeks ago, some people were saying that probably President Trump will resign or he must resign because he's weak in polls. But we see that he didn't resign. He not only didn't resign, but he secured the majority of delegate votes because he won in primary 239, 2000, uh, 339 delegates uh, out of uh, 2000. Uh, 400, uh, 2,340. So it means that almost 99% of those uh, delegates will be voting for him and will be nominating him. So it's excellent score, almost in uh, like in uh, Lukashenko's uh, Belarus. But the difference is that in this case, in case of President Trump, really delegates will vote for him. Really, he secured the majority, the, pop, the, the support of majority uh, people in the Republican Party. Why? Because he's probably still the best product in this party. It's very unusual that someone who was the president didn't get the renomination or was not renominated by his party. It happened in 1952 when Kefauver was a threat to President Trump. Trump resigned and he didn't run for re-election. And it happened in 1912, if I remember correctly, sorry, in 1976, when uh, Gerald Ford had a problem to secure a renomination against Ronald Reagan in the Republican Party. But eventually, uh, he secured renomination, what turned out to be very bad for Republican Party because Jimmy Carter won election in 1976. Well, you compare Donald Trump to Alexander Lukashenko, which is kind of uh, interesting comparison. But there is something that uh, is, is similar to both of those leaders. They have very young sons, uh, Kola, yeah, Lukashenko is 15 years old and he was seen with a Kalashnikov 
um, or AK-47 gun uh, recently on the picture with his father. The Baron Trump is not uh, taking part so far in the uh, um, convention, but it's also uh, pretty much about the same age. Uh, th there is also another similarity, I think, uh, most more striking. The, um, Lukashenko turns to the workers as the, his electoral base and workers uh, denounce him, wants him to go. The Donald Trump also uh, refers to American workers, saying, I'm bringing jobs back from China, and also is threatening that uh, Democrats are going to crush American workers with the taxes. Yes, of course. Uh, President Donald Trump is a champion uh, of uh, Blue America to some extent. Uh, workers voted for him four years ago, which is a little bit uh, unusual because it's a reversal of roles, because in the past, uh, in recent dec decades, uh, it was the Democratic Party uh, which was uh, championing uh, and fighting for uh, workers' workers' causes. So it's very interesting. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, President Trump uh, can be convincing to the people that he will bring back jobs because he did very well during his four years in office as the job creator and a person who secured the very good situation, economic situation in America, low unemployment, and generally uh, there was times of uh, economic prosperity. Uh, so uh, in case uh, pandemic uh, a little bit uh, slows down uh, in October, November, which is not obvious because we know that in the autumn this um, diseases uh, contagious diseases are spreading, but in case uh, we uh, fight against this pandemic in Europe and in the United States, President Donald Trump uh, stands very good chances uh, for re-election. So, uh, November 3rd and the, day, and the day after, we will know exactly what happened in the United States. Hopefully, fingers crossed, President Donald Trump will win because his uh, cause is very much similar to the cause of Polish government and uh, the general way we are going. Artur Wrublewski, PhD of um, Lazarski University, was our guest, sir. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you very much. And that was it for Poland Daily Business.